guys, it's Kwana back again with another This Is Us review. Hope you guys are doing awesome. Um, guys, this is it. We are on episode 17, season 6. This is the penultimate episode. We only have one more episode left of This Is Us. And what a ride this show has been. Um, there are so many emotions that are going on right now. I have my box of tissue nearby because I did cry quite a few times this episode. Um, it was, first and foremost, let me just go ahead and say, just in case you were here and you haven't had an opportunity to watch the episode yet, um, what a lovely episode this was. Like, I'm, I'm teary-eyed right now. I'm trying to hold it together. But it was such a beautiful episode. So if you haven't had an opportunity to watch the episode yet, there will be spoilers. I will be recapping the episode and giving you my thoughts and my impressions. But guys, it was just a simply gorgeous episode. I can't only imagine what next week's episode is going to be. Um, but to know that we were going to get the end of Rebecca's life, to know that we were going to see Rebecca die and for the show to have done it in such a beautiful way. But at the same time, still doing the thing that the show does, which is giving us so many layers, so many um, storylines kind of going on at one time and so many answers in this episode. Um, there were some things that I kind of wish they had included. Um, you know, no, nothing is above critique, but it really was a lovely episode. So yes, spoilers for the episode. If you haven't had a chance to watch it and you want to watch it without spoilers, do me a favor and save this video, bookmark it, tab it, give it a thumbs up and come back later after you've watched it. But we're just going to go ahead and jump right on in. So if you are new to the channel, hi, I'm Quana. Nice to meet you. Um, this is us is one of my favorite shows. I've been talking about this is us now. Um, on YouTube for three seasons, I think three or yeah, three seasons, I think, but I've been watching it since day one. And just like you, hopefully I'm just such a fan of this show. I think this show has been so phenomenal to have, um, especially when things in the real world seem so bleak. It's so nice to have this show. It's just a solid family drama. So, um, hi, nice to meet you. If you're new, if you're not new and you've been here before, Welcome back. Hey fam, um, do me a favor and click that subscribe button if you haven't already. I mean, why not? Why would you not want to su support someone who is in love with one of your favorite shows the way that you are? I mean, obviously. So if you're here and you're watching this video and you support the Pearsons, then you gotta support other fans, right? So just click that subscribe button. Moving on. Um, Guys, I just, I can't. I can't even begin to talk about just... I knew that this was coming. Last week I said that I thought that with the train we were going to get Rebecca back on that train that she was on with as a little girl with her dad. Um, I think this was in the episode where, um, where she and Nikki and Miguel go on their road trip to find Nikki's lost love and she couldn't remember the word caboose. Um, I think that was the episode. Um, at, at, and she could or she was I know she had taken Jack's kid not Jack's kids Kevin's kids on a little train ride and she couldn't remember the word caboose and it was like an echo back to her dad taking her on train rides on Sundays when they had to go into the city I knew that that was probably the vehicle with which they were going to take us through her life but guys I did not expect it in this way so i'm just going to try to go through this recap as much as possible without getting too gushy just because i really enjoy the episode guys and i just think i can't say it enough i don't think we can shout it enough like give mandy more an emmy like if she doesn't get an emmy off of this season of this is us i'm gonna be like heartbroken i'm gonna be like boycott the emmys <laughs> but it starts with this family that we haven't been met yet but the dad is Dulé hill Hey, Dooley Hill, I see you, I see you. Um, if you don't know Dooley Hill, he is from Psych. He is um, currently playing a dad, the dad on the reboot of The Wonder Years, and he's from one of my favorite t um, young adult, um, or I guess coming of age movies, Holes, 
yes um and he's playing a dad who's on a drive with his family they've just come from one of his son's soccer games where he's won and the family he's very giving very much randall pearson vibes i mean i don't know if you guys picked up on that i was like oh my gosh this guy is like randall so much um and his three kids and him and his wife and they're just vibing in the car having a good time the two brothers are kind of tussling and they go to trying to get this soccer ball and dad gets distracted and swerves and then he swerves to get out of the way of the car and the car flips and my immediate res response was no not the black family <laughs> like we just met them like wait what's going on what happened um then we see rebecca looking gorgeous in this red dress dress on a train talking about how her dad had always wanted to take her on a train ride um on a fancy train ride and drink vespers and um it's pretty clear that this is an imaginary journey but i think for a moment we might it could have easily have been like a like something that really happened in a flashback with her and Jack. But it's very clear because they've gone very, very much young, Rebecca. Um, and then we see her saying that she's she's talking to someone. We can't see them. They're off screen. She's looking out the window. And she's like, we're waiting. She's waiting for someone. And I think at that moment, we know that she is waiting um, for Kate. Once it's clear to me anyway, that this is Rebecca in her mind. And who is the person she's talking to? it's william i squealed guys i mean so like oh my gosh ron cephas jones it's so good to have you back um i'm so so glad that they figured out a way to bring william back in because he was such an important part of season one and i think really just a important part of this ensemble so it was so good to see him come back and he kind of serves as a guide um to rebecca on this journey along the way um we go back and we're at um kevin's house and this is where the family's picked up they've they've got the food kevin did it wasn't that they didn't have food guys it really was that he went to go get all of this chinese food from their favorite restaurant and um Toby comes over and starts like joking with Kevin about, um, hey man, can I give you anything? He's like, no man, I've got it. He's like, oh, I can't pay for my food. And Kevin's like, oh no, what is going on here? And he's like, I'm just kidding. I'm just this, I'm just kind of ribbing you, like taking you back to riffing on our old, our old chemistry or whatever. Um, and it just takes you back to like how much Toby and Kevin used to fight. But this kind of, they smooth things over really quickly. You kind of see that this has not been their MO as of late. And things kind of quiet down. He's like, no, I'm just trying to kind of take your mind off of anything. And he thanks Kevin for reaching out and co contacting them and inviting him to come out. And he's like, mom would have wanted it. Um, and it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful to have Toby back in that moment. I still I still think it was a bad idea on the show's part to break Kate and Toby up. But, you know, I get it. I guess we're stuck with we're stuck with Philip now, guys. I'm so sorry. I know I feel the same way. Speaking of Philip, Phillips comes in with the kids. So we know that the kids are there, but Kate is nowhere to be found. And everyone is like fighting over who's going to get the orange chicken. And then we hear Philip say Kate is catching a plane from London and she's on her way now my immediate thought was why is Kate on a plane from London and we don't have any idea why is the man who lives in London or was from London isn't on the plane with her from London but she's on a plane from London make that make sense to me I don't understand but hey it explains why Kate's not there for all of the flash forwards I do feel like perhaps they were going to originally go in a different direction and they really weren't solid on how Kate's present was going to play out. I think it could have been a lot of things. We know that early in season one, Kate's storyline was that she was going to lose weight. Um, whether that was Chrissy Metz's own decision to not continue that as a part of her storyline whether that was the show's decision of you know we don't want to be the show that's telling people that you have to lose weight in order to be happy so if we won chris sullivan was in a fat suit so i think they kind of needed to shed that fat suit off of chris and they couldn't continue on with that 
And if they had made the decision that, yeah, we don't want to be the show that's telling people they have to lose weight in order to be happy, then they kind of abandoned that storyline. And I think it was kind of one of those things where they just decided that with Chrissy's with Chrissy as an actress and then with Kate as a character, I feel like they were really playing kind of a wait and see. Not that they didn't have a ending for Kate, but that they had several endings for Kate, just in case. If her body changed significantly over the course of the show, then you didn't want to film her in those earlier sequences as heavy as if she changed weight. So it makes sense in one sense, the way that we got it. Um, but I digress. Um, I do love that Edie says she saved Philip some orange chicken. I thought that was really sweet. Um, then we meet this guy. It flashes to this younger guy, this adult named Marcus Brooks. And I just assume automatically out the gate that this was Deja's boyfriend slash fiance and baby daddy. And we know that his name is Marcus and it's the kid from the accident. So I assumed that this is how they were going to introduce a Deja's baby's daddy. And I was like, oh, okay, this is pretty cool. Like he, this is the next generation of Pearsons. She's the only one who's of age to be pregnant. So this is a nice way to introduce this new family member. Um, the nurse comes in and tells Kevin and Randall that Rebecca doesn't have long. Then we flash into the flashback where the family is in an accident and the family is okay, but young Marcus is laying in the um, in the ICU. He's in the surgical area and we're not sure if he's going to make it and the family is very distressed. Um, and then we get the train, the train of people in the family who are going to go into the room and say goodbye while in her mind, Rebecca is on a physical train. Okay. Sorry for that interruption, guys. I had something pop up on my phone. I love that Beth volunteers herself to be the first one to talk to um, Rebecca. Um, she's just always the one who's willing to jump in when everyone else is timid and afraid. She's the one who just kind of leaps in head first. And she and Rebecca have had um, both a strange but a very nurturing relationship. And it's so beautiful. Um, she goes into the room and she basically tells Rebecca that she's taking care of Randall and she's got him now, mama. And that acknowledgement of like Rebecca being the role model for us, a tender mother in the way that her mom couldn't be because her mother, her and her mother's relationship was so strained. I love that on the train, this is where they introduce us to the idea that we get to see the young actress that played Rebecca and she's looking at her as well. I thought that was such a beautiful moment. Um, and that part just made me light up with joy. Um, and then Beth basically tells Rebecca that she'll take Randall the rest of the way. Um, God, that line. Can we talk about Another actress on the show who definitely deserves her shine is Susan Kelechi Watson. I mean, just aces all around, all the time. So William escorts Rebecca to the next train car, and it's the bar car. And who is the bartender? It's Dr. K. And he's wiping the glasses with the Steelers' terrible tower. Guys, towel, towel. I, I used to not be able to say towel when I was little, and sometimes I slip up. But it's, it was a towel, not a tower, a towel. Um, I started crying again, seeing Dr. Kate. I'm trying not to cry right now. Um, and then we flip from the commercial break, <laughs> from the commercial break, to Marcus trying to show his boss that he's made progress in his cancer research. But the doctor is very dismissive and it's just like, this is not enough. This is not, there's so many people who are already in the game ahead of us. This is not what we need it to be. You need to go home and go be with some people. I'm going to go home and be with some people. At this point, I'm pretty sure that Marcus is Deja's baby daddy. Okay, so that's where my mind is. If you watched the show already, was your mind thinking that Marcus was Deja baby daddy? Because that's what I'm thinking. Um, I skipped past the part where Deja tells Randall that she's pregnant and he has to keep it calm. He can't react the way that. I love that she knew to tell him that. Also, can I just say that the actress who's playing a 
older Deja sounds so much like Deja and she really you could tell she studied Deja's nuances as playing that character because she reacts and moves like Deja like it was scary how similar they are I mean this show and their casting has just been top tier like they need to be giving out lessons to every other show from here on out well Randall um starts to kind of like play with Beth and ask Beth what did she talk to Rebecca about and Beth won't say and so then he starts cheesing and saying I got a secret and she's like oh what that they just pregnant and so he's just like how do you know and she's like I'm that girl's mother I knew she was pregnant before she was pregnant the mamas always know they always start looking at your nose extra hard and like looking and saying oh you're glowing baby um, I love their banter they're giving us like lots of R&B moments there um I like the fact that they know the dynamic of the characters of the show and they knew how to fold in like the lightness and the laughter and the joyous moments into this what could be like such a heavy moment, the death of, of, of a parent. I mean, just top notch writing all around. Um, and then like, and just the fact that they were bantering about being a grandpappy and um, she's not, she, nobody better not call her Mima. She's going to push that baby right back inside the shit. I was like, I wish they had had time to linger there because I was like in stitches. But then we go back to the bar car and there's all these mementos from their cabin and from the days of the family being together. And I mean, just like this, the, like just the minds, the creative minds that went to figuring out like how they were going to stage everything in that room so that our eyes get to linger on each thing. There was a, um, uh, the, everything from the oh my gosh from the old cabin with like the movies that were there there's a tv playing the Steelers game there I mean there's so many things that were in the background it was just so beautiful and then um she looks off and she sees the Randalls and the Kevins and you get the three actors that are currently playing Randall you there wasn't Lonnie Chavis wasn't there neither was um it's not Logan Schroyer, but it's the other Kevin who was playing along with the same age room at age range as like Lonnie Chavis. All of those kids have grown so much that they are now um, teenagers to the point where they would look like the young adult versions. And so it would be really hard to have like all four actors in that room, which is understandable. Um, but they had the current renditions of Randall together. They had the current renditions of Kevin together. That was so beautiful. And just that that nod that I was wanting because I felt like we didn't really get a chance to say goodbye to those actors. So it was really beautiful that they even thought about that in the planning of this episode and made sure that we got to see these actors again. It was so gorgeous. Um, Dr. K starts talking to Rebecca and reminds her that she almost died, that he almost lost her. And that even though she lost so much, um, that she made so much out of her life. He says, you survived just to lose a child and a husband and still, what a thing you made of it. Like, that line, best line of, I mean, like, like, like just the idea, like living your life in to make something beautiful of it to to just to endure so much to give so much i mean and it echoes back to last week when randall said our mother was magic like it's like no your mother is magic like she is still magic and she was she was magical she made so much of her life i can't stay on that line too long because that's really like a thing that i feel like if i was a preaching woman i could preach a sermon around that line <laughs> um when we get back into the house, Kevin is showing off a box of records to um, little Nikki and reminiscing about music that um, Rebecca loved. And he gets to Joni Mitchell. He puts on a Joni Mitchell song. It's his favorite song. So he starts playing the circle game by Joni uh, Mitchell. And the family is just reminiscing about all of the stories about Rebecca that we've heard over the years. Um, this montage is so beautiful. Um, during the montage, we get to see all hear all these little stories. And then at some point, Sophie goes in to say her goodbye to Rebecca. Um, and we see little versions on the train of little Kevin and little Sophie together. I thought that was really adorable. We get to hear Toby go in and say goodbye to Rebecca. And then we get a chance to see Toby with little Jack on the train. Um, 
I do hate that it was just Toby with Little Jack and we didn't get to see him with Haley too because the show has been so much about adoption and just to see him with only Jack was kind of like a bittersweet moment where like we because we've never really gotten a whole lot of like Jack with Haley and I do think that this is part of where my theory that they didn't really plan to break them up until like maybe they needed to add more conflict into the story and I say that because they they really kind of let the the attention to Haley's character kind of lapse in such a way that it's not like like how they've let Annie's character lapse I feel like it's in a way where it's like it kind of negatively reinforces some of the, the the messaging that they've had around adoption and I don't think that that was intentional so that's why I feel like maybe they weren't planning on breaking Toby and Kate up and it was just supposed to be some conflict between the two of them. So let me know down below in the comments what you think about that theory. Because I do feel like not having him with Jack and Haley was a misstep. Um, we get to see R&B for life. Get some more Randall and Beth moments. And then we finally get to hear um, see Annie. And that has been fans like one of the biggest, I think, letdowns and abandoned moments or opportunities of the show is that we never really got a chance to know and see Annie. Faith Herman has played Annie beautifully throughout the whole series as such an adorable little girl. And now she is, you know, a preteen. And I think it was a nice acknowledgement that they didn't do a lot with her character. The fact that when she goes in, she mentions to Rebecca that you made me feel seen. You made me feel okay with being the quiet one. And you told me that Every, even though everyone else was so big that it was okay to be the quiet one. I feel like that's so important because it ties in the idea that they didn't really develop a storyline for Annie. And here we're getting an acknowledgement of that. Like maybe that was intentional, even though I don't think it was intentional. I like that they folded it in in such a way to make it seem like as though it was intentional. I am slightly disappointed that we didn't get a chance to hear from adult Tess in the storyline at all. Um, and in the train sequence. Um, now, whenever the show comes out with a box set, I'm hoping that maybe there's like a director's cut version of this episode, an extended version of this episode where we'll get to see some of the other actors say their goodbyes. I definitely feel like this episode could have been slightly longer or that they could have cut out some of the Marcus storyline, even though it was very, very beautiful. Um, because it didn't, it was beautiful and it was nice. It was nice the way they folded it in. But there were characters that I would have rather have heard a little bit more from Tess being one of those characters. And then everyone starts to leave. Um, and then finally we get back to Rebecca on the train and she sees Miguel. Biggest, again, another big like letdown for fans was that we didn't get Miss Miguel's storyline earlier in this show. And so because we only got it two episodes ago, um, Fans are so many fans who were like on the fence about Miguel or really did not like Miguel now are like, oh my gosh, I would have loved Miguel if this was the version of him or if I had known these things about him. And so she sees Miguel very briefly. He says, you're still my favorite person. It was a cute little touching moment. But we all know that as the second husband, um, Miguel's not, well, we don't know. We don't know what can happen next week's episode, but we know that the end game is Rebecca and Jack. And so into the afterlife, we don't know if she's going to ride into the sunset with Jack, if she's going to be alone, or if she's going to join back with Miguel or be with both of them. We don't really know. Um, William continues to usher her on. And then in the middle of the night, someone sneaks into the house. And I'm thinking that it's Marcus Brooks. And surprise number one of the night, Marcus is not the baby daddy, y'all. I repeat, Maury Povich moment. He's not the father. It was Malik. The fans have won. Ah. Okay, sorry. I know I went cornball there for a minute. <laughs> Malik sneaks into surprise Deja and he is the baby daddy, y'all. So that line with Rebecca telling Deja, or yeah, Rebecca telling Deja that sometimes first loves come back around, or was it Randall who told her? Rebecca was there. Okay. Rebecca was in the car. <laughs> and and First loves went out. Malik is the baby's father and they're together and it's so beautiful. 
Um, I kind of felt like before they introduced the whole Marcus Brooks thing, I thought when Deja was telling Randall that it was Malik because he said, you know how hard he works. And it was like this warmness to her tone in talking to Randall about the baby's father that I felt like it was Malik. But then when they introduced Marcus, I was like, oh, here's this guy who's working hard and he's got on a, a lab coat. So this must be the baby's dad. This is us pull the old bait and switch on us. Um, speaking of Marcus, it was an intentional bait and switch because we go to Marcus next. He sneaks into the diner to meet his brother and sister. And they're like, at like, he's all upset because his, you know, his research is failing. And they're like, oh, dude, calm down. Like, you're okay. Like, you're not going to cure cancer on the first try. But you just have to keep making, what's that thing about lemons? And so then... We go to a flashback of young Marcus, his family, he's still in the hospital. His family's waiting to hear about his progress. Now we know he lives because we've seen him, you know, with a limp walking around in a lab coat. So we know that he lives, but his family's waiting to hear about his progress. And his dad goes to get coffee where we see Jack. Now, I thought at first that this was Jack from when Kate was in the hospital or either when Rebecca was in the hospital when she broke her arm. But we don't see until after the connection break a con con connection break the commercial break who which version of jack this is so all i'm thinking is like who is this family what is the connection to the pearsons with this um because this information makes marcus and his siblings a little closer to the ages of the big three so i'm like okay how are they going to meet with the family and then we get like the the omg moment because this night is the night that jack dies this version of jack is the jack right before he dies after having saved his family from the fire and so both of these families are going through these traumatic nights and i didn't that was a completely to me throwaway line when randall talks about the dichotomy of life and death when he's talking to beth about deja being pregnant and here we have the, the you know the, the life ending of rebecca and you have a new life starting complete throwaway line to me but that line ended up having so much meaning and he keeps, they say it again. So then you get the kids are outside back at um, Kevin's house playing Foursquare. So we get their Foursquare, their lazy Saturday. Um, it's daytime and he, but Randall says it again. It's so strange about the dichotomy. And then Kate barely makes it, but she makes it there just in time. Gets a chance to hug Rebecca, tell her that she's there, tell her it's me, bug. Y'all. I started crying again. The tissue was at ready. And so it's important because William has taken her to the caboose car, but she didn't want to go in. She was waiting for Kate. So she finally hears Kate's voice over that loudspeaker. And she's like, okay, I'm ready now. And then she goes inside and she finally sees the young Kate with fireflies. I wish we would have gotten the actress that played the, the young adult version, the late teenager, young adult version of Kate at some point in time because they had so much friction between the two of them and it would have been nice to see both of them in that caboose room um but Randall gets the last lines out of the big three he says you made us good and I I was done I was done y'all I was flooded um he doesn't win <laughs> the best line of the of the end of the show though because I think that goes to William but it's almost touching because William as his father this is where he gets his eloquence from in terms of the character and um Rebecca looks at William and she's like it's so sad at the end isn't it it's so sad and he's like um he says that he says basically everything that if it makes you sad at the end then it must have been pretty wonderful when you left it. And that is, that is this show, guys. That is this show for us. Like, it's sad that we're here at the end of this show. It's been so beautiful. It's been so beautiful. And so it is bittersweet that we're saying goodbye to something that has been so beautiful. And yeah, there have been a couple of crit criticisms that we can fairly make along the way. But this show has gotten so much right. So much more right than it's gotten wrong. And it's been so beautiful to have this family and to have these moments on Tuesday nights for an hour. Rebecca's finally ready. William puts his hat on one last time and leaves. And Rebecca lays down and she we go to randall and randall kevin says gives her a kiss and says he loves her and randall says tell dad tell tell him hey and we know who he's saying hey he's saying dad and she lays down in the bed by herself 
But then suddenly she says, hey, and she turns and there's Jack. And she squeezes Randall's hand and she lets go. Oh my gosh, it was so beautiful. I can't, it was such a beautiful send off. Um, I'm glad that this is not our last episode because... I want to hang on just a little bit longer and I do feel like we need to end with like um I don't know most most sitcoms that I I've not watched too many dramas that ended um family dramas that ended like you get a suspense drama and it ends with like somebody being found guilty of something or somebody being found innocent or them finding a body like when it's a scary thing when it's a sitcom almost every character I mean almost every show at least most of the shows that I grew up watching that ended, ended with characters moving. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, the family moved, empty house. The Cosby Show, the family moved, empty house. Um, the Living Single, family moved, empty house. And I mean, I think even like Friends, and like it's people moving. Um, when it's a show like this that's about a family and it's not centered in one location, I, I can't even imagine what next week's going to look like, what those final five minutes are going to look like, guys. I, I'm i just, I'm above and beyond, like, just not even being able to theorize anymore. Um, I will say, guys, I think next week's episode, I'm going to read some of the outrageous theories that I've seen. I saw so many theories around Kate being dead even though we had all plainly seen her in that Katobi flash forward where she's older people were saying that this was going to be this is this is going to be a, a all of a dream of Jack's um this is all a big you know dream that Jack is having like little Jack not even like big Jack um I've just seen so many crazy theories guys but I don't think that despite all of the 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 you the gotchas and like the the red herrings of the show guys i think this show is meant to give us something beautiful and i don't think they're going to pull the strings on us at in the 11th hour and undo all of the beauty that this show has been so um i guess my favorite moments of the night one getting to see william and dr k again that was a beautiful moment getting to see all the versions of the actors again Beth's last words to Rebecca, um, seeing Rebecca say hey to Jack and also getting a chance to see Miguel, that was beautiful. Um, I could have done without the Marcus Brooks storyline. Um, basically, he dies on the same night as Jack and his um, Jack get passed on the same advice that Dr. K had given him the night the big three were born. He passed on that same advice to Marcus's dad, who's passed it on to him. And then at the end of it, it's revealed that Marcus is working on um, groundbreaking research in medicine for Alzheimer's. Um, obviously, it wasn't, you know, early enough to help Rebecca, but it will go on to help future generations. I think that that's beautiful. I also think that the idea that like Jack had... Um, an impact on not just his family, but that his words that he got from Dr. K, like the idea that like all of that has a domino effect and that the, the kindness that we show to others, the words we say to others impacts other people. And so I think that that's important. I, I, I think I would not have felt, I would not feel that I could do without it if the show had been maybe like 15 minutes extra long. This episode, I just feel like it's deserved. I feel like when you go this long, six seasons and you get to the end, give the fans an extra 10, 15 minutes to sit with their emotions. But all in all, it was just a beautiful episode. So I would love to hear from you guys. I have been rambling on. I would love to hear from you guys. What did you think about tonight's episode? This is us, season six, episode 17, entitled The Train. What did you think? How much tissue did you use? And what are you hoping for for next week's show, guys? Um, I just want to say thank you guys again for being here watching with me, sharing these moments with me. I will see you guys in the comments. And until then, toodles!